Good morning. Thank you for joining me again today. We're going to talk about something that I find fascinating, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, on Monday, I talked to you about the baptism or filling of the Holy Spirit, that it's when we truly surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit can take over in our lives. The block for every Christian is self And self has to be surrendered to the Lord. And by the way, I don't think that's a once-for-all deal. I think if you surrender everything to the Lord this morning, you're going to have to do it again tomorrow morning. And if you're having a bad day, you may have to do it at lunchtime. And even when you get home, it's an ongoing experience of totally surrendering everything to Him until I can say from the heart, Jesus is my Lord. He is in control of my life. Now, that's a big step. Once the Holy Spirit is fully in control, he can produce gifts in us. Now, let me say straight away, these are not abilities. These are not talents. This is something the Holy Spirit produces in the life of the Christian believer. Do you understand that? It is not something that comes naturally. It is something that comes supernaturally. And obviously, if that is true, the life in the Holy Spirit is life in the supernatural. Therefore, if things happen that don't generally happen in life, we should not be surprised. We should just rejoice. This is God at work by His Holy Spirit. Now, let me read to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Again, if you're driving to work, I'll read. If you're at home, get your Bible. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Now to each one, that's each Christian individual, filled with the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given for the common good. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are for the good of the whole body of Jesus Christ. All right, what are they? Verse 8. To one that's given through the Spirit, the manifestation of wisdom, to another the manifestation of knowledge, by means of the same Holy Spirit, to another faith, by the same Holy Spirit, to another the manifestation of gifts of healing, by the same Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another the manifestation of the distinguishing between spirits, to another the ability to speak in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. Now notice verse 11. All these are the work of the one and the same Holy Spirit, and he gives them to each person just as he determines. So first of all, these gifts of the Holy Spirit, these manifestations of the Holy Spirit, are given for the good of the body of Jesus Christ, and it is the Holy Spirit who decides which manifestations to give. It is all the work of the Spirit. Now, having said that, We'll look at it more closely and see the individual manifestations and try to explain these and talk about them. But know again that it is the Holy Spirit at work. And if it's the Holy Spirit at work, he's going to do something different. We know from the Word of God, God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His thoughts are higher than ours. All right. Then if his Holy Spirit is within us and begins to manifest himself through us, He's going to do things that are different. And I think some Christians have never got hold of this. They don't seem to understand it. They always want the Lord our God to work in the same way that they work. Well, he doesn't do that. He does something totally surprising. And then they say, well, that's not of God. Well, of course it's God. This is the way he works. Let's go back to verse 8. To one person has given through the Holy Spirit the manifestation of wisdom. Now, let's take a little example. Supposing you are at work, and at lunch hour, one of your folk who works with you comes to you and says, Look, I know you go to church, or sometimes they say that dreadful thing, I know you're religious. That, to me, is a dreaded disease that I try to avoid. I know you're religious. Well, when you've got over that, they come up with some problem, and they want you to help them. Now, it's at that point you need the manifestation of wisdom. For what happens is, and this is using an expression that Malcolm Smith uses that I think is great. He says, God bodies himself in you with his wisdom. He bodies himself in you 
with his wisdom. And what comes out of your mouth is the wisdom of God, and you know it, and God knows it. And the other person looks at you and says, Wow, how did you think of that? Well, if you're totally honest about it, you know you didn't. You know it was simply the Holy Spirit in you suddenly came with that wisdom, and you knew exactly what to say to them. Now, that's a fantastic experience, and it's very real, and it's very beautiful. And when it happens, don't be totally alarmed, just rejoice. And if it's not an opportune moment then, as soon as the whole incident is over, go back to the Lord your God and you say, Thank you, Lord, I needed that. And you know and he knows it was not you, it was God through you, bodying himself with wisdom in you. Now that's the first one. The second one is like it and tends to overlap. Because the next verse, verse 8, still says, To another the manifestation of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. There are times when God will manifest himself with a knowledge in you that you yourself didn't have. It's a knowledge of something there's no way you could know. Now, think about it for a minute. If God dwells in us by his Holy Spirit, we have within us total knowledge. Now, that has to be God. God knows all things. And on occasions, he chooses to reveal to us what we ourselves do not know. For example, for some preachers, when they're preaching or when they're leading a service, God will show them something in a person. For example, he'll say, there is that woman and the, the individual can see them and they have this particular physical problem. Now, I have a friend who has a ministry not far from here and he has this gift of knowledge to an incredible degree. The late Catherine Coleman did. Catherine Coleman could stand on a platform with 7,000 people, people in an auditorium and she could point to the top balcony and she said she couldn't even see a face there, but God was showing her that a person up there was being healed of cancer. And because it was God, he was always right. Never any exception to that. When it is God giving the knowledge, he is always right. My friend has the same experience. He says, now, there's somebody here, and he can point to that part of the church, and this is the problem. And he's always right, because it's not him. Do you understand that? It is not human. It is divine. It is not human. It is a manifestation of the knowledge of God. That's what we mean by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And yes, they do take place today. And if your church says they don't, bless their hearts, they're missing all the fun. There is a tremendous move of God's Holy Spirit. And why shouldn't God manifest himself? You see, what we have to be careful of as individuals, because of our ideas and our doctrines and our belief, we mustn't block what the Lord our God wants to do. Let's go on. We don't want to miss too many of these. And we have restricted time. Verse 9. To another, the manifestation of faith by the same Holy Spirit. And you say, just a minute, Richard. Every Christian has faith. Well, that's true. But there's faith and faith. And what we're talking about here is God's faith being bodied in a person. Now, when it's God's faith, it is something incredible. And if ever you experience this with yourself or with someone else, as they begin to pray or you're praying with someone else, you feel a faith that you can almost taste. It is incredible. There is such a certainty in that prayer. There is absolutely no doubt in that person's words or in your words. You know for a fact this is going to take place. It's not faith that, yes, I believe in God or, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ whom I can't see. That is faith. But the gift of faith is something much more, something much greater, something much more certain and more positive. It is there. It is a certainty. And friend, when you find somebody who uses that gift of faith because God bodies himself with faith in that individual, you found something that is very, very precious and very special. Watch God at work. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit manifestations of healing by that one spirit. Now, if I experience the manifestation of healing within me, it is not for me, it's for you or for someone else. And there are some people who have these manifestations of God's healing power through them to others. 
We've seen it in our own ministry, and it's exciting. We know it is not us. We know we are only the channels through whom our God works. But by the same token, our God does work through human channels. He has chosen in his wisdom to do that. And as we are open to the work of the Holy Spirit, he flows through us. He bodies himself. He manifests himself through us to others. And yes, there are physical healings today. If again, in doctrine, you're told that doesn't happen today, bless your hearts. You're missing all the excitement. You're missing all the fun. We are seeing the mighty healing power of God. On certain occasions, maybe three or four in ten years, I have found myself saying to an individual, yes, sir, you're healed. And I always look around with shock to see who said it, because that's not the way I work or think. And it is simply God speaking through Richard and saying to that individual, yes, you're healed. And it comes out just in a flash. I don't think about it. It's not me. It's God speaking through me. That is a bodying of his healing power. But also notice, because this is another in verse 10, to another there is the manifestation, the bodying of miraculous powers. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And therefore, what he did when he was here that's recorded in the Gospels, he still does today. One of our friends had a little roast for dinner, and there weren't many of them. There were just four in the family, two girls who didn't eat much because they're figures. You know how girls are. And suddenly, into the house walked a family of five, three big teenagers, mum and dad. And my friend said, oh, stay to supper. And then she thought about her roast. So she went out and she said, Lord, this is where I need a miracle. Remember the loaves and fish. She began to carve and carve and carve and carve. And she said it was ridiculous. She said if she hadn't known the power of the Spirit, it was the most stupid thing she'd ever seen. The next thing was they all had second helpings. And the other thing was they had more for the next day for the family. She said it was absolutely the power of God. Now that's a specific. And I believe we can still see the miraculous powers of our God. Now don't go and buy a small roast because you've got a big group. But in God's power, he can do anything. He manifests himself in his people by the Holy Spirit.